Hello, everyone. My name is Alicia Graf Mack, and I am the director of dance at the Juilliard School. I had this idea. I just ran upstairs thinking, oh, here's something that I think I, I really want to share. Um, so when I was younger, I loved to explore the, the full possibilities of my body. Um, and I love to stretch. And uh, I found that one of my strengths was my extensions. And over my career, so many young dancers have asked me, how do you get your legs high? I want to improve my extension. So while we have the time, why don't we talk a little bit about how to improve your side extension? I talk about it a lot with my students when I'm teaching ballet and when I'm teaching modern. Um, and maybe some of these tips will be helpful for you. So the first thing that you want to think about when you are making an extension is where you place your weight. Where you have your weight on your standing leg is very important. So I'm, I'm going to come to my pretend bar here. I'm now at my house and not at the Juilliard school. Um, oh, before I say that, uh, go on. Dancers, you want to make sure that you're really warm before you start to work on your extensions because it utilizes a lot of large muscle groups uh, and you want to make sure you're really warm. So take a whole bar. If you want to, you can go to Juilliard's IGTV and take the bar with me that, that we uploaded um, about a week ago. Um, so yes, first tip, placement of your body. Let's see. So if this were my bar, and I'm standing in fifth position, right? When I extend my leg, or when I begin my extension, I want to make sure that if I were to draw a line from my nose all the way down, that my weight is not at my heel. Understand? I want to make sure that when I stand on one leg, that I shift my weight so that I'm standing on one leg and that my weight is then shifted from my nose down to at least um, the middle of my foot or beyond. Does that make sense? Just try it. If you were to go to your red terrain position with your weight at your heel, which we do sometimes because we have that bar, so we think we're standing on our standing side but we're really not. Feel what that feels like for your hip flexor and then take your weight and put it on your standing toe. Do you see how you're able to have a little bit more crease in your hip when you do that? Also, it takes some of the grip away from uh, your hip flexor and it will allow for more freedom of movement in that standing leg. So again, if I were standing on the other side, if my weight starts in the middle, when I start to take my toe to the sterling coup de pied position, today I'm not wrapping, you're going to shift your weight to the toe. You should be able to slide just like a little dollar underneath that heel, right? All right, so that's number one. You ready for tip number two? Tip number two is all about energy. Newton's law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, if I were to think about uh, my extension as um, a demonstration of energy, that standing leg wants to spiral actively down into the ground while the torso lifts, lifts, lifts out and the knee lifts and the toe lifts and we're all wowed by this beautiful um, movement through space. So the idea then uh, is similar to this. You know when you go to the fair and you have that big hammer and you wanna hit the plate so that the ball lifts high enough and hits the target at the top. If you were to put just a little bit of energy into hitting that plate, the ball is just going to go up and put her back down, right? But if you put a lot of energy down and hit that plate with all the energy that you have, the ball will shoot up and hit the target. So let's think about how that works with your extension. If I were standing 
here in fifth position. And I thought about, before I thought about my working leg, which is what we do when we think about I'm putting my leg in the air, if we didn't think about the working leg, but we thought about putting the energy into the standing side so that the energy is shooting down so that the, the working leg can shoot up. The opposite action is happening, right? So as you are spiraling that, that leg dynamically into the ground, then the other leg has the, the idea to have freedom to move. You are releasing the leg in the air and not holding the leg in the air. Understood? So we've talked about placement of the body. We've talked about energy, allowing that standing leg to dynamically turn out and root down into the ground so that the working leg can be free. We do not want to bear down our weight to make that leg rise. Yes? So we've talked about placement and we've talked about energy. Now the third thing that I want to talk about is the use of stretch and strength. You know, we can all bop my our legs way high in the air. You can bop that leg as high as you want to go, but then when it comes to extending, uh, it's a lot harder because it takes strength to do that. So let's talk about how we're starting, how we can start to gain more strength so that our extension looks even higher and more um, stretched into the air, okay? So the first thing that you wanna think about, number one, is that it's 2020. I say this to my students all the time. I want to see a 2020 retire, one that doesn't cross over the standing leg, and one that is nice and high and lifted so that when you take your pirouette or your extension, the knee is already ready to go, you're nice and open and, um, and uh, have created a strong foundation for whatever movement you want to do next. Yes, dancers? The, uh, another thing is, and I'm, this is a tip from my mentor, Mr. Arthur Mitchell, who uh, was the founder of Dance Theater of Harlem, he always said, you should have a dirty mark all the way up your tights, around the side of your knee, and all the way down. And every time you take a passe or retire, you go through that same pathway, right? Meaning, when you take a pirouette or an extension, you're not going to disengage your leg because then you're going to grip in, in the hip flexor, right? So. As you take your 2020 retire nice and high and lifted and making that crease and it's uh, to your standing side and you're using a sense of opposition, uh, once you take that heel and hand stretch, the, you want to make sure that you're thinking about the placement of your ribs, yeah? We're making two columns from the side of the ribs, one, two, all the way up, up, up. Your third column in the middle is the one burrowing down, 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 so that this leg can have freedom to shoot in the air and lift as high as you would like it to, be, to go. Now, when you practice taking your hand away from your, arm, from your leg, you want to be sure that you engage your muscles and rotate that leg so that when you take it off, you are extending both sides up, 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 up in the air and not bearing down, 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 down to make that work. Lift into the joint to bring it back and bring it down. Yes, you almost want to feel like I'm going to use my hand because now my leg is cramping, uh, that you are opening the joint to lift, to come back and enveloppe all the way down. That is a really great exercise in order to lift the knee even higher before it comes down. So let's try that one more time. You're gonna take that heel and hand extension. We're gonna think about um, allowing our spirals to move in opposite directions. You're gonna think about making two columns from the side so that you're not displacing the rib, yes? And that you are allowing that leg freedom to just shoot up and move. I'm gonna change to the other side because that leg is Cramping, okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that 2020 retire, yes dancers? 
And as you take that extension, do not allow the rib to go. The thing that I'm thinking about is new, making a neutral pelvis and allowing my standing side, yeah, to support my weight, not on my heel. Then, this one's gonna go down a little lower. Uh, when I let go, I want to spiral the leg to the ceiling, to the ceiling, to the ceiling. Now, you're gonna think about opening the knee joint to come down, uh-huh, and then draw that line that I talked about when Mr. Mitchell always says, draw that line straight down. Every pirouette, every extension should go through the same pathway. Dancers, I promise. If you work on your extensions with that sense of um, sort of scientific research, the way that you understand the physics of your body, I promise that you will get better and, and improve those extensions day by day by day by day, okay? The last thing I wanna talk about is uh, making sure that you practice dynamically stretching. So there's so many times, and now that we're home right now, uh, you are gonna be sitting in a split and doing your homework or uh, you know stretching but not using any uh, of your muscles in turnout. So I'm gonna, let's hopefully this works, I'm gonna transfer this down here. And move this. When you take your stretches, just like a second stretch to have an example, you don't want to just sink down into the stretch. Because remember we talked about the, your extension is a combination of your stretch and your strength, your flexibility and your strength. So when you are in your second position, you don't want to just sit and let the, the legs open. You really want to engage that turnout. My um, legs are reaching so long that the heels pop off the floor. Yeah, you want to think about those knees actively going to the back, either to the ceiling or to the back as you make those extensions. So you're not sitting down and always thinking about that idea of the ribs, being a little elongated and something else happening so that your body's always moving in these amazing dynamic lines. Yes, dancers? Let me know how it goes. I, I thank you for spending time with me today. These are things that I sit around and think about. So uh, if you have any other questions, uh, leave your questions in the comments and we will get to you. Everyone take good care of yourselves. Uh, and be well.